Okay, so before I start this video, I just want to explain a couple of things. Um, so you'll, you may notice there's a change in audio quality. That's because I'm recording this from my empty office. I was supposed to be moving, or me and my wife were supposed to be moving house yesterday. Um, unfortunately, the, that didn't happen because we found out yesterday morning that the buyer hadn't completed the sale. After much stress and some negotiation and going back and forth, hopefully he's going to complete the sale today. So we might be moving house this afternoon or tomorrow, which is a Saturday. I think this video is going out on Sunday. So if you're watching this, then we might actually also be moving tomorrow, which is a Monday, but then on Tuesday I fly to the Alps and all my stuff's in boxes and everything's chaotic, everything's up the end, very stressed. So basically, my content is not going to be regular over the next couple of weeks because I'm either out of the country with no internet access or, you know, I'm moving house with no internet access. I currently have no internet access. Everything I own is in a box. I've had to dig out everything to record this video. So enjoy. Um, Right, let's talk about some new cameras. Um, and I am not a gear review guy. I don't have the patience or the aptitude for it. So let's just crack on with my opinion on everything that's happened over the past week with various announcements. This is my much loved Canon 5D Mark IV. I've been saying for the past year that I'm going to upgrade. I have flirted with Sony. I have, you know, toyed with the idea of going to Fujifilm. But ultimately, I decided I'm going to stick with Canon and wait until they release their full frame mirrorless, which has happened. They have announced the Canon EOS R and it looks fantastic. I have to say it looks very good. Will I be upgrading? No. No, I will not be upgrading. As it stands, I won't be upgrading based on the specs. The reason for that is if I took a if I took a camera into somewhere, let's say an autumnal woodland, and took a photograph with this camera, I'm not going to notice the difference between this camera and the EOS R because the EOS R is essentially a 5D Mark IV in a mirrorless body that's had a few upgrades. It's like a car that's been specced up a little bit, you know? Um, yeah, lots of cool features. Uh, one of the best features, actually, of the EOS R that got me most excited uh, was the ability to drop in a filter into the rear of the lens or the lens mount. So that means that you don't have to have a polarizer on the front of the lens. You can have a polarizer at the back uh, behind the sensor or in front of the sensor or somewhere, somewhere around there. Um, and that's great because it means weather will be less of an issue. Vignetting in theory will not be an issue. You could shoot super wide and not get any vignetting. And it just looks like a fantastic innovation. But all of the other stuff, you know, the little, the little touch bar, it looks nice, but I, I wouldn't use it. Um, and that got me asking a few deep questions. Um, so when I bought this Canon, when I bought this Canon 5D Mark IV, however many years ago I got it when it first came out, it's probably, probably not that long ago, two and a half, three years ago, I was a different photographer then to what I am now. Then I was shooting landscapes, but I was also shooting a couple of weddings. I was shooting events. I had stuff in the pipeline that required an all round camera. Not anymore. Now I pretty much exclusively shoot landscapes. And my main camera, 99.9% .9 of the time, shoots images, not video. So you can forget any video specs that comes out on any camera. It doesn't interest me. It's not what's going to make me buy a new camera. I've got this fella for my video. It's fine. This is a Canon M50 best video camera I've ever had um, and comes highly recommended. Ah, so, what do I do? What do I do? Fujifilm have released the X-T3. It looks fantastic. If you're a travel photographer, as far as I'm concerned, there's, n there's no, no competition. That X-T3 looks amazing and it looks small, uh, lightweight, you know, that looks like a great camera choice. Nikon have announced the Z6 and Z7. <laughs> Feel sorry for Nikon, they've been given a hard time, um, which I think is slightly unjust, um, but I don't know, I don't care, they're a massive corporation, I couldn't give two hoots. But I'll bet you the image quality out of that Z7 is fantastic. Um, you know, it's gonna be like a D850, but in a smaller, lighter body. 
So that looks pretty decent. Basically, as it stands up, keeping hold of this camera for the time being, I do believe, but I don't know, that Canon are gonna release a more beefed up version of their EOS R system. It's just, I've been waiting for so long. Can I be bothered waiting even longer? I don't know. Um, what does look interesting is uh, the Fujifilm. There have been rumors and stuff leaked about a GFX 50R which is a medium format 50 megapixel rangefinder camera. That looks interesting because it, the GFX 50S uh, look is a fantastic camera, but for me it was too expensive and just too much and I couldn't justify buying it. But the new rangefinder version in theory should be a lot cheaper and that brings it more into the consumer market and that's, that's where I am. And don't quote me on this, but I think I don't think it has a rear LCD screen, which means it's gonna be lighter, it's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna be more basic, it's just gonna be about the, the, the sensor, you know, the image quality and the lens, that's what it's gonna be all about. It's not gonna have any fancy gadgets on. Um, and for me, that, that looks interesting um, because I've changed as a photographer, like, as I said, you know, um, for me now, the two most important things in a camera are form factor, so that's it, essentially weight. You know, I do a lot of hiking. Um, I'd rather not have two camera systems, I'd rather have one camera system. So if I can get a reasonably lightweight camera system with excellent image quality, then that's what I'll go for. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens. I love Canon, I really do. I've used them my entire life, I really have. But these are huge, multi-million, million pound companies, you know? And um, I, have, I have no problem switching from one to the other. I see it very much as when I buy a new car, I see what car I like at that moment, and I buy that car. Cameras are the same as cars, exactly the same as cars. So, you know, my Volvo's five or six years old. I'm probably gonna change my Volvo and get something else. Do I care what I get? No, I'll get the best car on the market at the time, and that's how I see cameras. So, um, when people freak out if you change camera systems, personally, I don't understand it. I don't, I, it's not anything I can relate with um, or relate to. So, maybe Canon will release a bigger beast than the EOS R, and that will have no AA filter. Maybe it'll be 50 megapixels, you know. That's pretty much what I'm after. Uh, I don't know. And if they do that, then the new lenses look superb. You know, Canon's glass is phenomenal, and, and that's kind of a big reason for sticking with Canon, definitely. Um, but I'm not upgrading to the EOS R because it would be a waste of money for me. You know, I'm not saying it's not a great camera. It really is a great camera. And if you shoot with something like a, an 80D or an older camera, uh, like a 5D Mark III or something, then it will be a, a great upgrade and a fantastic step into the mirrorless market. Um, but for me, I shoot with a perfectly functional 5D Mark IV, so I'm not going to spend money on something that's essentially the same camera with less weather sealing and, you know, no, absolutely not. Uh, haven't tried it, haven't had one in my hands, so my opinion might change if I can get a pre-production model and have a play with it and go out and take it on a couple of proper photography trips, then that might change my mind. But really, I, I, want, to, I want to step up. I don't want to step across and up a little bit. I want to, I want the next level camera. And the ESR, ESR is not the next level camera. Um, so yeah, there's a few options. And I love all of these camera announcements. It smashes the market wide open. All of this competition is fantastic. And I, I can say confidently that in the next six months, I'll have a new camera. Maybe I'll have a new camera system. I don't know. Um, but I just wanted to give my two cents and you know take a very pragmatic approach because you know you, you have to look at your needs as a photographer and what you want. You know these when these cameras get reviewed uh, like um, by all of the big camera channels like Tony and Chelsea and um, Jared and uh, the the DP review and Camera Store TV and all those guys, they do a fantastic job of reviewing every single detail in the camera system from video to photo. And what you need to do is work out what 
what's important to you and what's not important to you. And for me, video is not important at all. Um, fancy functions and features are not important. For me, it's battery life, form factor, image quality. That's it. That's what's on oh, price. Obviously price. Uh, that's what's important. How can I finish this video? How can I sum up all of this new camera stuff? Uh, X-T3 looks blooming brilliant. Um, but for me, it's not there for landscapes. You know, it's a, it looks like a great all-round camera and it just looks superb. Uh, EOS R looks like a fantastic camera. If you're lower to mid-range Canon user and you want to upgrade, you are going to be super, super happy with that upgrade. It looks fantastic. But if you're already at the top of Canon's market, it's not an upgrade, I don't think, unless your 5D Mark IV is falling to pieces. Fujifilm GFX 50R, even though I don't think anything's been announced yet, for a landscape photographer, does that not look like the perfect camera? Who knows? Who knows? Um, and Nikon Z6, Z7, if you're a Nikon user, don't be put off by all of the all of the people giving it a hard time. I think um, I actually think it will be a, a fine camera. Maybe they'll drop the price. <laughs> That's the only problem. It's a bit expensive for what it is. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's there's my two cents. Um, I understand there's going to be new stuff released from Panasonic as well. Nothing new from Sony, but Sony don't need to release anything new. Sony are the leaders. Sony have fantastic, fantastic cameras out there. Um, and I know for a fact that that Sony ASR, is it, what's it called? Sony AR, A7R3? Sony A7R3 looks, is superb. Simon Baxter's got one and I'm always jealous of his image quality coming out of that camera and the resolution he gets. Um, so yeah, but for me, Sony, not quite, the Fuji films are exciting me more than the Sony and Canon might release a bigger beast than the ESR. So I'm still in limbo. I'm still in camera limbo. Um, and I thought, you know, thought this might be the time that I upgrade, but nothing has been announced that's really made me want to upgrade. Um, yeah, I'm dead tight. I'm really fussy. You know, I don't, don't do things lightly. So maybe another six months for me. Yeah. There you go. Hope you, hope, you enjoyed this. hope you've enjoyed this video and my opinion on all of these new cameras. And I think the takeaway from this video would be don't be sucked in by marketing. Don't be. And don't be sucked in by reviews from people who haven't actually had their hands on a camera yet. And just ask yourself what's important to you and then you'll be happy. Yes. Until next time. Bye for now.